Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 829, 829 that is, and topic today, because it is Sunday, after all, hence the casual attire, by the way, is um, putting your relationship dreams in God's hands. Is that really the right thing to do? That's, some of, that's the title I think I wrote, <laughs> I'll explain what I mean in a moment, um, because this is a bit troubling at the moment for me, so I want to explain, express my concern and also some action steps. So before I jump into the topic at hand, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen me before, although if you haven't, why not? Um, and I am a relationship expert, let me back up and say the right way around. I am an inspirational speaker, a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm also a best-selling author, I should say an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, book for singles and couples, men and women, highly recommended, even if I say so myself. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work and inspires this series of talks I've done now for over two and a half years called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're episode 829. The topic is about putting your <laughs> eggs in God's basket, I was going to say. But putting your relationship dreams in God's hands, so to speak, because there's a, there's a certain way people are where they believe that everything they need, if they just pray for it, it'll be done. Now, just to be clear, I'm going to offend some people who are very religiously based. I'm speaking from a spiritual perspective, having been on the path for 30 years and having been a spiritual counselor and praying for people for many, many years. So I want to make sure I give you some structure about this because I'm not just going to go ahead and be um, a heretic <laughs> or blaspheme or something, but I want to just speak, speak out some things because one of the biggest things people do, oh, I'm going to get nasty about this, um, is that they have this bad habit or habit period of disowning responsibility, of not being clear about taking the, the, their life in their own hands. And there's a, and sometimes they use the religious um, avenue to talk about it. Sometimes they use other things too. So I'm using the religious because it's Sunday. These things like, you know, if it's, if, it's God wills, if it's God's will, it will be, that sort of thing. I have a problem with that, as you may have guessed <laughs> by what I'm saying. And the main thing I have a problem with this is because people tend to abdicate responsibility. They just basically just go, you know what, I'm, I'm giving up, putting my hands up, letting God take care of it. If you hadn't noticed something, God does not have a set of hands to physically interact in your life, except the ones attached to your arms. Let me say that one again, because I want to make sure this point gets clear. God does not have a set of hands to come in and interact with your, in your life and make things perfect for you. The only hands that God has are the ones that you have at the end of your arms. So... Hey Steve, nice to see you broadcast. What do you say there? Oh, ninety percent of all inspiration comes from the ground up. You have to get, you've got to move your feet for God to direct you. You're getting ahead of me, Steve. Shh, don't tell everybody. <laughs> but I want to say another way because this is my this is my teaching. So there. Um, <laughs> but yes, I agree with you in that sense. The thing about it is, it's in in the spiritual teaching I come from. I, I'm from. I come through. We talk about. Um, well, we have a thing called prayer treatment. That's the way it goes. You, you treat for people. You do prayer treatment. It's actually from an old, old teaching from Joel Goldsmith and Ernest Holmes. And so the, the shorthand is that we treat people. So the, the thing is we always say is that you got to you treat and then you move your feet. So what Steve said is true. You've got to move your feet. You've got to take your action. So I want to break it down this way. Is that, and, and put another piece on the table, by the way. If Whether you have a belief in God or not, if you use the term about you know, putting your, your wishes into God's hands, God does not expect you to sit by and just put your, and just fold your arms and just wait for it to happen. That's not how it works. Whether you have a belief in God or not, you've still got to take action. And what I mean is, and, and this is the thing, by the way, God's will, God's plans, God's actions, whatever you want to use that term, I believe, and this is the context I live under, and I use the term spirit more than God just because that's what fits for me, and whatever fits for you, you can use that too, is that any of those directives have to come through physical expression because we're in a physical environment which means that those things are going to happen through your participation in what's going on so don't advocate your role what that means though is take um, what's we're looking for not wise action take inspired action there's a good one to use inspire because inspiration is, is spirit within which is God too so that works and that's interesting because the word you used there, Steve, was inspiration, which is what which is which is from spirit. It is the fuel of spirit. So 
it, it's it's great to have that and also no I'm not going to throw any more. there's a lot of Latin words that translate to English to go down that path anyway to, to get back to the point if you are looking for love and you want to have the right relationship yes you can pray about it yes you can put it in God's hands so to speak in the energetic of that but it doesn't mean stop doing something that still requires you to get out and participate in the world you know if for example you say I'm going to put put the uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to win the lottery and put that in God's hands you're still going to go buy a ticket God does not manifest the lottery for you without taking action to do that it sounds silly but that's kind of the idea relationship in that sense is no different from the lottery ticket you still need to participate in action steps towards that goal allowing God, spirit higher self what do you want to call that to add guidance and inspiration to your direction it's too easy I believe to say yeah yeah God's going to take care of everything and I'm using that as a bucket of, of, of um, I'm calling God a bucket no what I'm saying is I'm calling that idea like a bucket to just throw your stuff in so you don't want to take responsibility and this is the thing the belief in God is a personal choice not, not everyone does it I understand that totally I didn't for quite a while but my understanding is is that God's expression is our lives meaning that we can we don't give a power to God because God, <laughs> oh yes okay I'm going to go there too a lot of people I know <laughs> a lot of people out there have a very codependent relationship with God it's not a um, interdependent relationship and this is the thing I've talked about this as well in terms of romantic relationships let me talk about it with God let's bring the big guy on, ta on the table for this <laughs> we, we, we have this belief somehow that our actions don't mean anything that God's going to take care of everything and if God doesn't like it it won't happen all this sort of stuff I firmly believe and I've had experiences in my own perception that I believe are true again belief is part of it that God doesn't do anything outside of ourselves without our participation we are the instruments so to speak of our own expression and there's a whole lot of talking I'm going to have a whole bunch of spiritual teaching which I'm not going to do here because it's not really the theme I want to bring in necessarily but we are all individualized expressions of God the way I learned it so if we are well there's one way one of my teachers talk, talks about this way that God that we were made in the image and likeness of God we've been trying to return the favor ever since and the idea of making God into a human being that is thank you Dan nice to see my broadcast and thanks for the love that making uh, it's making God into a human being because that's what we're doing we, we, we anthropomorph we'll try this word again it's one of these words we anthropomorphize anthropomorphize yeah that was the right word God to be some sort of humanoid personally I think God is more like the force in Star Wars God is an energy that is within everything, everyone, every being, which is, which is, I mean, you can't prove it, but I believe it's the truth. And that's the thing about God. There's nothing to prove by it. It's not really about, I believe it's about what we believe inside and what we align to and what fills us up. So if you believe a God outside on a cloud with lightning bolts thrown down, judging us with a white beard and white gowns is your belief and idea of God. Good luck with that. That's not my preference or my belief. So the understanding of this principle, getting back to relationship conversations, is that we think that God has all power. We have this codependent relationship with this God saying that God's in charge and we don't have control over it. And I don't believe that. Now, again, this is my broadcast, so I'm saying what I believe. If you don't agree with it, I understand and I'm willing to have people interact with respect, please. Because <laughs> if you don't believe, I understand that. But the thing I want to say about this is the codependency that we get into with, with any deity, call it God or whatever you call it, is a misunderstanding relationship. I've talked about this before in many of my broadcasts about how codependency is a trap that puts you in a place of being a victim. Now, let me bring it to the human level for a second. If you're in a place where you are in a relationship with somebody else and you are in a codependent relationship, what you're doing to express that is giving them power over your choices, giving them power over your feelings, giving them power over your um, way of life. Their decision making, because the, let me put it another way you tell that person that they make you feel happy you tell that person that they make you feel whole you tell that person that they make you feel loved they make you feel that's a trap because you're giving them the power to control your feelings and that's the epitome and the and the and the pain of codependency 
the way through that is start to realize, in fact, that what happens is people, your relationship partners, your, your boss, your coworkers, your, your, your family, does things in your presence that you react to, that you choose to react to. So you choose to feel more loved when that person's around you, maybe. You feel more happy when the person's around you. But it's not their job or their role to give that to you or make it happen for you. That's the codependent trap. Again, interdependence means you own your own feelings and you choose to respond and you have interaction with the other person where you love being with them. It's not like you go, I don't care about you at all, I'm free. It's about you enjoy being with each other and you have an intermingled, intercon interconnected and interdependent relationship. That for me is the relationship you should have. Should have. Relationship I recommend you have with God, spirit, whatever you call it. The paradigm of codependency in, in relationship to your deity of choice is one where you give them the power to make you feel good or bad. Now, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just end up keeping interested in downloads. Some of these I'm sharing, some I need to keep to myself just out of politeness. But the idea of giving something invisible power over your feelings, to me, doesn't make any sense. What I do get for interdependency is that we are free. We have free will. That's another thing, by the way. We are actually fully autonomous beings on this planet. We have free will to do whatever we want within the constructs of law and agreement and society, etc. But when we bring God into the conversation, that doesn't make us any. It doesn't make us a superpower. It's not like a superhero thing. But what I believe it does, though, it gives us an added alignment or an added um, intention to where we want to go. So then when you have, you give your relationship, dreams, plans, intentions over to God, what you're really doing, I would say, I would hope, is you're enrolling the idea of a, a spiritual perspective on your relationship. Now this brings up a whole other piece, which is when your relationship, how spiritual is it? Is it just for the sex? Is it just for the human comfort? Is it just for stability? Is it just for security? Or is it for personal growth, spiritual development? and an alignment with a spiritual principle that you believe in, perhaps meditating together or doing yoga or something else that brings you together. See, if you're going to give your relationship plans to God, you've got to bring God into the relationship. That only makes sense. So that's part of the conversation. In addition to that, just to keep it entertaining, <laughs> hopefully, is that we are... Um, well, okay... We tend to not we're not we tend to not take responsibility for our own lives and especially around relationships. We don't necessarily get clear about our vision, our intention, or how we want to make a relationship happen. We actually want to basically go through life and hopefully meet somebody. You may go on the date you may be on a dating app like let me slow down a bit, sorry, I'm running ahead of myself. A friend of mine who watches this in Germany likes me to slow down, so let me try that again. We are um, out in the world exploring and basically just going about our lives. We may go onto the dating apps and swipe and click and check and find somebody that way. The question is, if it works out, is that because of a coincidence, because of matching dating criteria, or was God working behind the scenes? See, any one of those things can be true. We don't, know for, we don't know for fact what's actually happening. It's all based upon our belief. So when you're in the process of looking for your romantic connections, your relationship opportunities, and a chance to dance with a new partner, why not stack the deck in your favor why not include your spiritual belief system in alignment to your relationship choices personally because of my path I'm on I have been calling into my life much more spiritual women I'm not dating anybody at the moment but women I've been meeting are much more spiritual awake and aware not God fearing God loving which is different from some religions by the way but, uh, un but understanding from the point of view of spiritual principles and spiritual depth and the realization this is the big piece by the way for me is that we are not children of God so to speak we are one with spirit, spirit like, again like, the, like as I mentioned the force in Star Wars it's really that sort of energetic that spirit works through all of us in all of us if we're awake to it or not it's still happening so then it's up to us to use it for our good that's the challenge with this planet is we can't see most of us beyond the three dimensions so you can't see God or spirit, whatever you call it, running around the planet doing stuff, except by the expression of people in the world. Which basically means the same thing as far as I'm concerned. If there is no God throwing lightning bolts from the sky on a throne, because we can't see it. Some people believe in that, by the way, not myself. 
Now, by the way, I come from a Jewish background, so we never had that image anyway. So what can I say? Well, we did have the Old Testament. Mm. Okay, scratch that. But my belief in the spiritual principle I live under for the last 25, 30 years, and I'm exploring and still explore, is that the evidence of God, the evidence of spirit, is in the way we live our lives. Now, I just took a tangent, I know, just saying that. I believe, and this is one of the things I watch, and um, no, I don't want to get political. Let me say this piece. We have a lot of people who cling to labels in this country and in this world. And the people who are the, what do they call the evangelicals, that's the word, the evangelical people, not say which side, but they are, have used that to somehow um, elevate themselves above other, above, elevate themselves above other people to a degree and also believe that they have the right way of doing things. This is one of the problems we have on the planet is we have this division between, I don't know what's going to go here, but here we go. We have a lot of this right, wrong, left and right experience going on. My thought, just a possibility, if, this is, if there is a God in expression, in the way we live our lives, wouldn't it be, uh, <laughs> I want to say neutral is the wrong word, but God, if God is, in, let me say it this way, okay, if God's in everybody, as I supposed earlier, and is equally expressed everywhere present, then that means whichever side you're on, God is with you. There is no God on one side or the other. It's God is on this side and the other. It also means in the area of dating that there's a, not as a war, <laughs> in the area of dating, when you meet somebody, perhaps their spirit's working through them as well, or God is working through them as a spirit, however you call that. What I'm attempting to stay here, working, well, okay, let me back up a second, there's a piece I was dropping in earlier. The expression of God for me in life is through love. The expression of God, because my belief is God is a loving God. Spirit, what do you call it? Hi, Nancy, and this is my broadcast. I've been playing spiritually today. It's a Sunday broadcast. I'm doing a lot of stuff about God just to mess with people. Well, no, no, to inspire people, excuse me. Let me be clear. So this understanding that, for me, that God is expressed through love, spirit, what do we call that, expressed through love, means that when we have againstness and fighting, God has your relationship waiting for it to throw on 3D. <laughs> I love that. And I was going to speak to that piece at the piece of the back end as a little invitation because I do this is, I do prom do offer um act, what's the word? Calls to, calls to action, CTAs, calls to, calls to action in my broadcast. So I'll let you know about something at the back end. And anybody else watching, by the way. So this piece we have that is this dance of left, right, right, wrong, against this stuff, is a human choice, forgetting that we're all connected to the same source. bringing it into relationship because I want to keep it relationship centric that's also true when you have an argument with your partner when you have a date that doesn't go well can you be okay I've done the four levels here let me play with it let me play the first date stuff you go on a date doesn't work can you be polite can you respect and love them from a distance as a spiritual principle versus ooh that sucked that hate, I hated that didn't like him nothing about him can you bless them on their way as you walk away I mean there's at least the subtle things I'm playing with here but each of these pieces and I'm speaking about five different components are all about how relationships and God work together, or relationships and spirits, I call it, work together. You have the choice each moment to be more loving. That's a God principle for me. You have a ch chance every moment to serve and inspire other people in your relationship or in life. That's another spiritual principle for me. When you bring your awareness, presence, consciousness, attention to what you're doing, that to me is how you bring, or how you bring your relationship into God's hands, so to speak. You're taking action that's inspired. You're taking action that is fueled by a desire to love, to express, to serve, to be a giving person. These are all pluses, by the way, in that realm. realm. So the, the idea I'm trying to get to here, to, some, to bring it to a, a this thing, a distillation, a, a, a <laughs> is that we are either going to be victims or free. I'm thinking about an alternative. Because the thing is, when we start looking that we don't have control, we can't have what we want, that God's controlling everything, then we're playing victim. Again, that's the codependent trap. When we're free, we recognize that we have freedom to do what we want. Spirit works with us. We're in, we're in cahoots, an interesting choice. We're in cahoots with God, and we can have what we want that way. So it takes a little bit of choice to bring that forward. Now, some things I want to drop in your lap to think about. And this is the piece I... Did I say this piece already? No, I didn't say this piece already.
how do I say this? Um, <laughs> if you are, if you are saying, "Okay, God's going to help me with my with my plans," you don't necessarily know how it's going to happen because again, this is out of your hands. This is in God's hands now. So, if somebody shows up in your life, like a relationship coach, such as myself. How do you know that's not God working through mysterious ways to have you get what you want? I'm just using myself as an example. This is true for anything. I mean, you know, when you are you're looking for a car and you want God's help and suddenly somebody shows up next door who has a car they're selling, is that just a coincidence or is that God working behind the scenes? So the same thing is true about relationships. I, I do these talks every day and if you found my talks by accident or you've been watching me for a while, you may be in a place where you understand that my... Um, talks are here to help inspire and provoke things in you evoke excuse me let me mice evoke in you but also what i bring to the table is stuff that i believe will help and i trust that your vision of god's spirit brings me into your life i have no control over that just to be clear but i do want to say a couple of things i'm going to put in the comments as invitations because if you want to talk about this and get further on this conversation i will put a link in the comments for a conversation with me a direct personal private complimentary clarity conversation with me which would be a gift from me to you we can talk and just go deeper in this conversation if you want to find out more. Secondly, um, actually, three things. One of which I did mention in my book that's going to be in the comments, of course. But secondly, third, second, third, one of those. Um, I created a course called Attract the Man You Want. This is for the ladies, by the way. Attract the Man You Want. Because it's one of the things that men, women don't get is they can attract the man they want. So I'm going to put a link in the comments so you can check it out because it's a simple idea and it's eight mo eight modules i think personally the spirit infused all of them because it came through me when i was creating it so it might be god guided for you maybe <laughs> but i would invite you to check it out because you might find that it's the steps you need to take to have as nancy put it for your relationship to show up in 3d actually in this context i did talk about it in one of the modules about coming in um 4d yes because i included time so there so it's 4d so there <laughs> and finally I'll put in the link in the comments to remind you about loving yourself as I mentioned I think God is one God is expressed through love as one of the biggest principles I believe and loving action is a God action so that's one reason I created my self love practice because when you love yourself more that's giving God to yourself if you want to play that way and I'm getting because this Sunday I'm being spiritual I'm putting God everywhere because why not so the self love practice will be in the comments as well because that will help you that will bring you back to yourself in a loving way which allows you to be more loving to yourself which creates a healthier relationship with yourself which makes a much healthier relationship with everybody else start here grow there that's how it works kind of the gas mask idea on oh, sorry oxygen mask idea on planes take care of yourself firstly take care of others today's your god day yes indeed nancy it is for a lot of us i was at a guy of course as you know uh, this morning because that's when my, that's when i get my my fix my and it's funny because for me it's not about the service it's about the energetic the love the fellowship and the connection all self-care mindfulness and reset nicely done Nancy I love that so again four links four links five links what I say there so conversation with me attract the man you want self-love my book four links in the comments so yes I got be indeed um, those have been the comments if you have any questions thoughts about this broadcast please put them below and I will sign off I'll respond ah replays in case you didn't no, this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube and you're wondering who I was talking to for the last 20 minutes. Um, Facebook Live's on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week, hence Sunday's broadcast. Uh, and you can find that at Barry Selby on Facebook. My replay is got on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. But I've noticed those that I don't think I'm getting all my replays are stored. I think they're cutting off at a certain point, which is a bit frustrating because I didn't know it was going to happen. But thankfully, since the beginning, because a friend of mine suggested I do this, I backed them up. And then I put them up on YouTube, which you can also watch them on. And every single one is definitely on YouTube. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can find the replays there in a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to build up my account. I've only got a few hundred, a couple hundred, and it'd be nice to have more. Um, but that's the best place to find my replays. And again, questions, comments here. The links will be in the comments after I sign off for four things I recommend you check out. I think any one of them, all of them will help you. Um, my work is, is geared towards women, as I said at the beginning, but if men want to get help, you can message me over social media if you really want to do the work, because for men, it's a bigger, bigger ask, it seems, because men, from my experience, don't ask as easily as women do. Anyway, that's a whole other topic, and I'll speak about that tomorrow, perhaps. I thank you for watching, and thanks for the, in, the um, input and the interaction. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Steve. 
and thanks uh, who was the other person I didn't see thank you Dan sorry I didn't see who it was before appreciate you being here so with that thank you for watching I will see you again tomorrow same time same channel take care bye